Welcome to the Lesbian Review Talk Show. I'm Sheena and I'm joined today by T.B. Markinson, author and founder of iHeartLesfic, which is a very interesting site. And so we are going to discuss all sorts of things, including her writing and her unique way of marketing Lesfic. So, T.B., thank you so much for joining me today. Ah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to get to speak to you. Okay, so let's talk about your writing first. I've read a couple of your books and you tend to write in first person. This, I believe, is quite a controversial move on your part as an author because people either hate it or don't really mind it, but like people tend to hate first person. Do you find that or do you find that people actually love it because it kind of draws you into the story more? I've actually gotten mixed responses, obviously. I mean, the problem with whenever you write anything, you're never going to please everybody. So you have to write the style that suits your storytelling abilities. And I've always enjoyed, as a reader, first person. So that's what I started writing in first person. So yeah, I have heard comments from people saying that they would prefer it not in first person and such. But I love digging into my main character's head. So in, in order to do that, I need to really get into their thinking and everything. And that's why I selected first person. For the most part, I haven't heard too many negative comments about it and uh my fans seem to enjoy it so keep going um i have considered switching it up with a future project but i haven't been able to find the time to uh work on that project just yet Mm. but if if you're known though for first person novels and your fans are used to that aren't you worried that they're gonna suddenly go like what is going on here (laughs) <laughs> that is the problem, isn't it? Once you start writing, and I don't think you really set out when you f- first start writing your first project thinking, or you, or at least I didn't because I was just getting used to writing, but like you set out yourself and you brand yourself right away. And then when you do want to try new things because you're a writer and you want to learn different aspects and everything and you want to push yourself a bit, sometimes your fans don't like that. So you kind of have boxed yourself in a little bit, which is... I understand, but also is a little frustrating at times because there are different things I do want to try, but then I'm like, ooh, how is everyone going to react to that? And so it's kind of a fine line. You got to figure out what works and what doesn't and what your fans will be able to accept or not. Absolutely. But you write all over the spectrum. You don't write just one genre of book either. Most of my books all have lesbian characters, and there was really no reason why I did that besides the fact that I am a lesbian, and it's just I was able to get into the minds of my characters easier that way. But yeah, I mean, I have all right. I have a new series, um, Girl Love Happens, which is erotica. I have lesbian romance, and then I have some romantic suspense and such. My thing is. I don't really want to be penned in by a genre. I want to, I love stories. Everything about my writing has to deal with stories. I like to tell stories. And sometimes certain stories speak to me more than others. And it just depends on um, what project I'm working on and everything. That makes sense. So if somebody hasn't read you before, what is your best selling book? What would you recommend they start with? Uh, my most popular book would be um, The Chosen One, which is uh, which was published back in, I think, the spring of 2016. That's the one that's had the most sales and has the most reviews and such. That book's about a young woman, Ainsley Carmichael. She's just starting college in, in Boston, Massachusetts. And all of her life, she, she hails from a, um, a political dynasty. I think kind of like the Kennedys in Boston. And so all her life, she's been raised to believe that she's going to grow up and become a president of the United States. So her family has groomed her. Um, she has like stylists with her clothes and they, she's every decision she's made in her life pretty much is based on running for president of the United States at some point in their future, even though she's only 18 years old when she enrolls in college. And that, of course, all comes crashing down on their first day of college when she meets Maya this beautiful young woman who just steals her heart right away. And so Maya is an intriguing character because in this connected day and age, she doesn't have a cell phone. She kind of keeps to herself and everything. And Inslee is just pulled into her world. And so that the worlds collide with Maya's secrets and Ainsley's ambition. And so it's all about the, how they can, if they can survive all the obstacles. That sounds cool. 
It's, it's interesting because one of my passions is politics. I, when I was in university, I studied history and I, I studied political science. And so I was able to blend my studies with American history and all this stuff that's going on in politics. And this was even, I started writing this before uh, the last U.S. presidential election, but I was kind of seeing some worrisome signs. So the book kind of delves into a bit of that. And the sequel, which should be coming out later this spring, kind of delves a bit more into the whole political atmosphere in the United States. That's a bold move. It is. It is. First, I started writing in first person, and then I started delving into politics. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It will be interesting. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about the release of that one, but it's a story that truly spoke to me, and I want to be part of the conversation. Okay. So your covers are particularly gorgeous. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, first of all, who designs them? My designer is Erin Demron hill E-D-H, R-E-H-D. And she, I, f- I found her, when I first started writing, I was involved in a uh, an online group for indie authors. And one of uh, my writing friends used her covers and I absolutely, she, she wrote fantasy and um, I absolutely loved her covers. So I reached out to Erin and asked, you know, do you do romance novels for uh, lesbian fiction and stuff? And she was totally on board with that. And uh, she's fantastic. I, I'm not much of a design person myself. So I give her pretty much the bare minimum <laughs> and she just kind of runs with it. And she's, she's knocked them all out of the park, in my opinion. Absolutely. Do you find that you get uh, a good reaction to your covers? Yeah, I get quite a few compliments on, I mean, just the past week, I've heard at least three compliments, including yours. Um, people who've reached out and be like, wow, I really like this cover. It pulled me in. So yeah, it's, I mean, that's one of the basic things they teach you when you first start thinking about publishing. You got to first, obviously, tell a good story that your readers will like, but you have to, especially today with so many books being uploaded on Amazon almost daily, thousands, you got to pull them in right away. And so the covers are vital for that. And so you are of the impression that um, covers are important in sales. Um, yeah, I always have been. Um, from everything, I before I even started uh, publishing, I did a, a lot of research and such. I'm a I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff, and I read many books. And one of the and they always hounded like two things: a great story and a great cover. And of course, the third um, leg of that would be you have to have a good blurb to hook people in and such. Back in 2011, when indie publishing first started becoming really big on Amazon, a lot of people were kind of squeaking by with not the best covers, but there weren't as many books flooding the markets. And now even indies are really upping their game. You can, when you look on Amazon, a lot of the covers are really spectacular. So if you really want to compete in today's indie market, you really have to take into account that your cover is going to be a huge selling point. It's actually one of my continued messages is we have to improve lesbic covers overall. We have to start competing on a more global. I am right there with you. I believe that um, wholeheartedly. You really, really do have to pay attention to what you're putting out in front of customers. Because especially, I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm a lesbian author and I am a, a big supporter of the lesbian community. I What I always think is what I'm presenting as a lesbian author also kind of helps represent the lesbian writers. And so if we can all kind of just up our game and help each other, it would be fantastic. That's actually a really great way of looking at it. Good for you. (laughs) I am a team player. (laughs) Always have been because, you know, it's so hard. This, this market, I mean, like, especially as a writer, I spend many hours in my home, on my computer by myself. Well, I have a cat, but um, he's usually sleeping. He's 16 years old, so he's he's usually sleeping. But, um, you know, you're locked in your head all the time. You're trapped with your characters. And it can be kind of a lonely career choice. But through social media and everything, you don't have to be completely alone. And so when we I get to work with authors on certain things with, with I Heart Less Fake or even just like sending a positive email to a, a, another lesbic author, like, hey, I read your book. I found it fantastic. It helps open up some dialogue and it helps you reach out to the community that you are working with. Well, this is very evident in your work at 
creating I Heart Lesfic, but let's stick stick with your novels just for a minute before we cross sure. over to that. So of some course. of the novels are actually quite mainstream in terms of the concepts behind them. Not super, super like targeted at the lesbian market, but a much more mainstream kind of story. Are you finding that you're able to cross over? You've got the covers, you've got the kind of storylines. Um, yes and no. Uh, for some of my books, like when I do a book bub, I get a lot, especially if I do like a free download. Um, I remember for Claudia Must Die, which is a is kind of a black comedy crime story. Um, so when I did a book bub on that, I, d- I offered it for free. And um, I got oh, I got an insane amount of, for me at least, an insane amount of downloads, like 40 or 50,000 downloads. And so, yeah, I was able to cross over in certain ways. And uh, it's one of those things where I think every author, you know, when you publish a book, you envision millions of people reading it and loving it and talking about it and hopping on the tube in London and seeing people reading your book. But that's really, I mean, there's very few authors who actually reach that status. So I don't particularly chase the mainstream I, I chase readers who are going to like my stories. And so, um, so, and sometimes when you do go a bit mainstream, you, you take a bit of risk, especially with lesbian fiction. Cause I've had reviews on my books where like, I think my best one star, which you don't usually get to stay very much. Your best one star review was for my book, a marionette. And the reviewer said, Hey, it's a great book. If you like the story, if you like reading about a bunch of lesbians. And I was like, you know, I'll take that. I mean, she obviously, she finished the book. She wasn't sure that it was, she, I think she was confused that it was about lesbians, even though the um, blurb pretty much shouts, hey, this is a lesbian book. The main character is a lesbian. But um, I think the cover and everything kind of pulled her in and she ended up reading it and she enjoyed it, but she had issues with the fact that the characters were lesbian. And I think that's part of the issue with some lesbian going mainstream because you do kind of take a risk of, getting people who are just going to bash your book just for the simple reason that they don't approve of the LGBTQ community. Okay, so let's go over to your your latest project. I Heart Less Fic. Yes. Okay, so this is like such an interesting start because you're doing all these unique and interesting and very different kind of things. I've got the Lesbian Review website and we review yes. lesbian fiction and then... For the last couple of years, I've noticed a bunch of other blogs and and review sites popping up and that kind of thing, but nothing quite like what you're doing. So explain <laughs> to explain to readers who who I mean listeners what it is that that I Heart Lesfic actually does. Okay, yeah. Um, let me. Can I can I start with telling you how it came into being, how I yes. got to the. Okay, so um, so this is going back a bit. So uh, when I was publishing, I was. Living in London, I published when I first published my uh, A Woman Lost. I was living in London. And uh, before I'm American and I'm living in England, my partner's company transferred us back in uh, 2011 from Boston, Massachusetts to London. And so when we moved here, I was kind of in a zone where I was like, well, what do I want to do? Because, you know, my partner's working here and um, do I want to find a job in London and work in an office again or And my partner was like, you know, you've always, always talked about being a writer. This is your chance, you know, to see if if you can make a go of it. So she was 100 percent on board of saying, why don't you take a couple years, you know, try your hand at writing. And so I did. And so I'll fast forward a bit. So in 2016, her company was getting ready to transfer us again to Ireland, which we were very excited about. We love uh, living in different areas. And so I was doing all right. My, my publishing was picking up and my re- new releases were gaining traction. My launches were going better and better. And so I was quite pleased where, where I was at. And then all of a sudden, when we started going through the paperwork for our Irish immigration, I found out that I would not be able to work in Ireland. And so I was like, oh, that's, that's an issue. And so I was like, I need to figure out something. In order to meet, because we were only going to be in Ireland for a year. And we didn't want to give up that chance of living in Dublin for a year, especially for my partner's career. Um, she's always been so supportive of me. So I was never, ever, never entered my mind of being like, oh, no, we shouldn't do that. So I was like, okay, I need to think of ways to stay connected 
with my readers and with the lesbian community overall. So I started doing a lot of reading again. Again, the nerd aspect in me kicked in. I love research. I'll research anything. So I started reading books about networking and everything. I was like, well, this might be a good year for me to spend time, a good solid year to work on my writing and, and networking. So I decided I was going to try a first joint promotion. So I reached out to Harper Bliss and Claire Lydon. And um, I had a, an email relationship with Harper and I hadn't met Claire Lydon yet. So I reached out and was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking of doing a, a sale for my Woman Lost series box set. And would you guys be interested in joining? And so uh, they were like, yeah, sure. It was like Valentine's Day of, I think, 2017. So we did this. It was just kind of, we just kind of slapped it together and everything. And it worked really well. All of us, you know, sold quite a few books. We hit up our our, our lists, our uh, subscriber lists and everything. And it went well. I was like, well, that was, that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. And I enjoyed getting to know Claire and Harper a bit more and everything. So I started thinking about planning a future sale and I wanted to expand and include more authors. So I reached out to quite a few and I think I had for that sale about 10 or 11. And I was like, I need, I need a, a home to list it on the internet. And um, at the time I had a successful a blog called the 50 year project, but that was all about me and it was about my 50 year project, which is about traveling, reading and watching movies that I want to, knock off a list. And I was like, well, that's not really the night that I can't really put it there because it's not the right market. And I had a author's website, but it, I didn't want it to be just about TV markets. And I wanted it to be about the lesbian community. So what I decided, I was like, well, I should create a website. <laughs> and so I did. And I named it I Heart Lesbian. And so I started it, it. It came in the bean so I can promote these sales with other authors. And then I decided, you know, with my other, um, with my 50 year project, I used to do guest blogging and such. And, and I reached out to other people who like to travel around the world and such. And I really enjoyed the communications. So I was like, well, maybe for I Heart Lesbic, I should invite authors to guest blog or do uh, written interviews and such. And so I started setting it up that way. It just kind of snowballed really where everyone was like, wow, this is fantastic. You know, a place where we can come and talk about lesbian fiction, where readers and authors can get together kind of. And so that's, pretty much how it all started because I had way too much free time in Dublin. <laughs> Isn't that how it always works though? All the best inventions. I'm not saying this is the best invention, but all the best inventions become derived from need. So yeah. So it, I wanted to just kind of keep my name out there and I wanted to get to know other authors and everything. And it all just came in the bean and I didn't realize when I started it, how quickly it would take off. I thought I could have like a year or two to kind of quietly work behind the scenes <laughs> to set it up more, but no, it took off a lot faster than I was expecting, which is fantastic. And how big is your audience now? Cause you have a mailing list, right? Yeah, I have a mailing list set up for I Heart, uh, I Heart List Fake. The mailing list is about, I think I'm just inching over a thousand and the each each Tuesday, I send out a new, uh, it started off as the new releases newsletter, but then I decided, I realized that I shouldn't limit it to just that. So each Tuesday, it, the newsletter includes new releases, um, giveaways that are hosted on iHeartLesfic, other giveaways of authors let me know so I can help them promote new audiobook releases, and just overall like lesbian news, like with Jay on in January, I started the lesbian bingo. So I include the updates twice a month for her, like when she launches a new square and such, or if um, other authors are doing a, a sale or, um, so it's just basically a way for authors to get the word out and everything to readers. And then for the actual website, I'm receiving about anywhere between 5,000 to 8,000 hits a month. That's really good stats for how short you've been going. I know it's been six months and the first couple months it was, I was barely doing much. So yeah, I, I am pleased and um, I'm excited about the future and growing it a bit more. So is it helping you sell your own books? Yes and no. Um, like I said, the, one of the reasons I didn't want to put the promotions on my own author website is I didn't, I don't want it to be all about me. So I try very hard to keep TV marketing kind of in the background 
because it's really a place for the lesbian community. And obviously I am part of the lesbian community because I do publish and everything, but I don't want it. I don't want to become that obnoxious person who's always screaming, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. So I want it to be more just to highlight all the authors that I enjoy reading and that I have enjoyed getting to know and help them reach readers and such. But yeah, my books, I mean, I, I do include at least one of my books in each of the sales and stuff. Okay. And how are authors and influencers in the sector and readers, how are they reacting to this? Um, they're reacting pretty well, actually. I was amazed. Um, I started, I started reaching out to the authors I had a relationship with early on. Like I already had a um, relationship with people who were involved in the sale, like Miranda McLeod and Amanda Radley. And like I said, Claire and Harper and such, you know, I reached out to them for like interviews and guest posts and everything. And they were all enthusiastic and everything. And then I started, I was like, well, I need to reach out a bit more. So I started reaching out to some of the other names like Melissa Braden and Jay uh, and everything. And I started being like, hey, you know, I introduced myself. I just started this website. I was interested if you would like to appear, make an appearance. And everyone's been really receptive. So I'm amazed by that. The, the thing I love about the lesbian community is everyone's always excited to talk about <laughs> lesbian fiction, which is fantastic. I think for so many years, it was so hard to find us in movies or in books or on TV shows. And now that it's becoming a bit more mainstream and everything, it's just fantastic. And everyone seems to want to help promote it as much as they can. I agree with you on that. I have a, I have a thought though. I think that like, I understand your inclination to hold back your, your books and, and not turn it into a platform to present only your work. I, f I think that there's scope for you to do more, promotions of your own work as well with art coming across that way well yeah i can i can obviously include myself in the guest posts and everything um yeah I, I think that goes back to my whole shy nature of growing up reading books and always i have always been the type even as a kid like i loved hanging out with the adults and i would always just listen i was very observant and i still like that I mean, if you see me out and about, like in the pubs and everything, I'm always listening, listening to people talk, picking up like accents and stories and tidbits. And yeah, so that's just, that's just my nature. And I'll have to kind of try and force myself to bust out of that even a bit more. Because you are creating this amazing platform and you should benefit from it. Are you charging for advertising? Is there any, are you getting anything out of this at, at this point? <laughs> Well, that goes back to the whole Ireland thing. So when I set it up, um, since I wasn't allowed to work, no, I wasn't charging for anything because I couldn't. <laughs> but I'm back in London now. I don't think I'm going to start charging for to be included in the newsletter or anything quite yet. I know I want to see how it goes. I want to grow it a bit more. It's something that I've considered down the line. I want to build up a little bit better business model and see exactly. I mean, it's still so new. It's just a baby right now. I want to see exactly what direction I want to take it and I want to do it right. So I'm t right now taking time, getting to know the audience, getting to know how authors and influencers are taking to it and, and launch it properly. You have been really supportive of what we do at the lesbian talk show as well. I mean, you've got like all our shows listed on your site and i'm very grateful for the publicity you've been able to give us you, you offer a great service and um i was pleased the other day i saw on facebook where someone said hey over on i Heart lesbic i noticed they have a lesbian talk show i didn't know about that and i was happy i could help people discover i mean it's all my thing is all about discoverability working together so we all we all have voices we all want to share and the more that we do, the more that it becomes just normal and everything. And it makes it easier for everyone to reach out and reach whatever dream they have. It's it's such an interesting sector to be in because it's there's a lot of very amazing giving women. Like if you ask people, they'll generally give you time. They'll give you their books and that kind of thing. But there isn't a community of selling. There's a community of giving, right? 
Yes. So to go from not charging to charging is a, is an interesting yes. and difficult transition, I would imagine. It is, and it's not something I'm totally set on yet either. Um, so it's one of those things where I have to really sit down and figure out if that's something I want to do. But given that, I can't imagine the fees would be all that astronomical. I mean, iHeartLesvig is not BookBub. I mean, BookBub charges an insane amount, especially for the mainstream. I mean, some of those features would cost several hundred dollars, if not even a thousand. I think some of them are a thousand. But um, yeah, I'm not I'm not really focusing on that part right now. Right now, my my focus is on just helping the Lesvik community as a whole and helping readers find stories that they like. That's what I'm focused on. So, because oh, you're very active with authors and publishers. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you, you're building a nice network of that. What are readers? Mm-hmm. Are, are readers starting to talk to you? Are they starting to ask you questions? Where are you with readers? Yes, readers do reach out to me. Um, when you sign up for the – one of the first things, when you sign up for the, the newsletter, I, I send you an email asking you to name your uh, top – lesbian authors that you like and and most of them will write back and they're all excited and then if I have like an interview that they particularly enjoy they'll email me and they'll be like I love that interview with Melissa Braden you know who I'd really like you to interview is Jerry Hill or something and so I reach out and I I do send out um, emails saying like hey who would you like to hear from this time and uh, I've also heard from other readers being like you know I, I really look forward to the newsletter because I like to know what's coming out and I find a lot of my new re- my um, new books because of the newsletter and such. So yeah, I am hearing from readers as well. So it's been, it's been exciting all around because it seems, because one of those things is you're always juggling oh, so many balls in the air running a website and trying to get everything together and you can kind of drop the ball on some things. But it's nice to know that like the, all the target audiences I'm trying to hit are actually responding to it. Absolutely. And it's not an easy thing. I speak from experience. It's not an easy thing to build this market. So well done. No. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> okay, so where are you going with it? What's your next step? What's the next big thing? The next big thing on Our Heart Less Fic? You mean? The thing that readers love the most, which helps, obviously, the authors, is they love the sales. Because I've been uh, hosting a sale every few months and usually in the beginning when I started hosting I only had about about six to twelve authors at a time and we had all email our subscriber lists and everything and then I started for Christmas I did a much larger sale where I think I had over 50 authors involved and quite a few books and so for that one we did all social media because I didn't want everyone to email their subscribers because that would just they would just flood Uh, readers inboxes over the holidays which just didn't seem like a smart move and so the readers really really responded to that they loved it I was seeing it all over Facebook and Twitter and everything and so I scheduled another large sale over uh, Valentine's Day that was yet another success so I need to try and balance having more sales involved that are large but also trying to mix in some smaller ones so with lesbian fiction you have all these different subgenres. you have romance you have historical romance, fantasy thrillers and such. And so I want to be able to kind of laser focus on certain genres. I'm a big supporter of expanding lesbian fiction. So it's not, even though I I, I mainly write lesbian romance, I want to include uh, lesbian science fiction and everything and uh, raise awareness. I'm just, like I said earlier when I was talking about my writing, I just love stories. I mean, I'll read just anything. Everyone's like, oh, what's your favorite genre? And I'm like, I whatever mood I'm in that day. I'll read just about anything. So uh, I want to help raise awareness of not just lesbian romance, even though lesbian romance rocks and that's what I write. But um, I want to help fantasy authors, science fiction and everything. So I need to figure out a way to boost the the smaller genres. Um, I'm right there with you. I also have a very wide reading palette, if you like. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually a big believer in boosting the the thriller genre right now because if you look at the the two biggest selling mainstream book genres it's it's romance first and then thriller second yes. and i believe yes. that as the lesbian fiction market matures 
we're going to see a similar representation in Lesvik. And there are really great thrillers out there. We just need to expose the readers to it. Yes, absolutely. We need to broaden people's horizons. I, I, I'm a big believer in that, just not in reading, just in overall life. There's just so much out there. And it's nice to try something new every once in a while. I'm not saying you have to abandon, if you're a romance reader, you have to abandon romance completely. Please don't, because I want you to buy my book. But um, no, just to know that there's other things out there and other stories. For, like, I'll say it again. For me, it's all about the story. I don't care if it has vampires or werewolves. If it's a good story, I'm going to love it. Well said. All right. So is there anything exciting that you particularly want to talk about in terms of I Heart Lesbic? Right now, I am getting ready to, I'm going to start emailing some authors. Um, I'm hoping to put together another sale for sometime in May. So I'm hoping to recruit a bunch of authors. So we'll go out with a blast in May. And then in June, this is not with I Heart Less Fake. This is with me. But in June, I will be taking the month off. My partner turned 40 this year, and we're heading to Italy for a few weeks. And I'm very much looking forward to having a break. <laughs> I've been going nonstop uh, with writing because when I was in Dublin, I did an insane amount of writing. And then uh, now I'm launching the books and such. And then I was also going f- full speed ahead with I Heart Less Fake as well. And so I'm a bit, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> not to lie so yeah we're uh, heading out in june and uh we're gonna travel around italy and hopefully eat a lot of gelato sample a lot of wine and just spend time together we both have uh, very busy jobs so it'll be nice to have some time together that sounds amazing you guys must enjoy that one of the things we both really enjoy doing together is travel we've um, been to quite a few countries um together and such and it's something where we we love saving our money. Like, we'll be like, should we go out this weekend? No, let's save it for Italy or whatever trip we're saving for. And so that way, when we go, we can just have fun. Okay, so where can people find you and where can people find I Heart Lesbic and what should they do? Well, absolutely. They can find me, TB Markinson, at lesbianromancesbytbm.com. That's my website. Um, they can sign up for my newsletter, my author newsletter, and um, I'll give you a free book, uh, Woman Lost, which is one of my uh, more popular books in the beginning of the Woman Lost series. And I will send you a bonus chapter that is not available anywhere else um, to a Woman Lost as well. If you want to find me on iHeartLesfic, it's iHeart. Lesfic.com. And there you can sign up for the newsletter to receive the weekly newsletter that includes all the Lesfic goodies that have been released the previous week and audiobooks and Lesfic news and all the fun stuff, the giveaways and everything. Yeah. I suggest highly that if you are listening to this, that you go sign up because I personally have spent money on these sales. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing about the sales is because, like, obviously, um, Depending on where you're at or in life and such, if you're not on Kindle Unlimited or anything, um, some of the books can be a bit pricey and it all adds up. And so when you have books where you get an option of 50 books for, they range from free to 99 cents or 199. I mean, you can get quite a, you can get quite a haul, stock up your e-readers and not have to worry about it for a couple of weeks. It depends, or a couple of months. It depends on how fast of a reader you are. Some of them just cruise through books it's absolutely amazing absolutely tb thank you so much for joining me today thanks for having me you've been listening to the lesbian review podcast i'm sheena and today i was joined by tb markinson author and founder of i Heart lesbic you can find all her links to her social media and websites in our show notes you can also find in our show notes a link to our patron page patrons of the lesbian talk show get exclusive podcast content So if you like what we do, consider becoming a patron today. That's all for this week. Bye.